Welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection. Today we're going to make two batches of Valentine's Day candy. I think you're going to like it. You may notice as we pour the hot sugar, the sugar looks like it contains water, but it's just molten sugar. We add food coloring, and we have to stir it to boil out the excess water in the food coloring, because we don't want any water in the final product. It would make the candy sticky. The table we poured it on is a specialty-made candy cooling table from the 1800s. It's water-cooled, it's cast iron, it weighs 2,000 pounds, and it's done a great job of removing most of the heat from the candy. But it's removed the heat from the parts that touch it. The center is still very, very hot, and we get to mix it all together and average out the heat before we start constructing our design. This design of candy has three colors of candy red, purple, and white. The red and purple are pretty obvious, but the white starts out as a deep amber, and we have to pull it on the candy hook again and again to make it white. Joran here is pulling the candy about 75 times, trapping air bubbles with every pull. Each of those air bubbles act like tiny mirrors reflecting the light, and when she's done, the candy will be a brilliant white without the addition of any food coloring. The first of the two designs I'm going to make today will contain the word love and be striped on the outside in purple and red. Each letter in the word love has to be constructed individually and in three dimensions. I'm going to start with the letter O, mostly because I like to start with letters in the center of the design. If you ever visit Tallahassee, Florida, you can see us make candy in person. And if you can't come, you can always buy our candy at www.pd.net. The next of the center letters is the letter V. The V will require two wedges of white on either side. I eventually want to make each of the letters to occupy roughly a block shape of candy, even if I have to put padding or filling in it to make it work. The next letter is the letter L. L is both very easy because it's just a right angle, but it's also pretty hard because I have to maintain that right angle no matter what the heat of the candy around it does. The letter E is the most complicated of the letters here. The line in the middle I've already made and trapped between two pieces of white candy. I'm then going to do the wrap around the outside edge, making sure I keep the corners sharp. From time to time here, you may have noticed I've made some of the lengths of wrap longer than I needed them and then trimmed them to size. This produces a sharper edge and a better candy at the end. We've wrapped the word in white, and now we're wrapping it in the final wrap, a wrap made out of stripes of purple and red. The letters I made are longer than the log. When I stretch the letters, the center are sharper than the edges, so I make the letters so that there's some waste that sticks out on either side. It makes for a better product. And then we scale down the candy from the log to the rods without distorting the words inside. This looks deceptively simple, but takes lots of practice. We then cut off the end, and that little end we call a unicorn dropping, and we sell it to uh, people in Tallahassee through the store. None of our candy gets wasted. But much of these unicorn droppings get turned into things like creme brulee and sugar cookies and toppings for biscotti. We waste nothing with lofty pursuits. And sometimes we have fun with the unicorn droppings. We sometimes turn them to swans, or squids, or anything else our imagination gives us. It's sort of a very sweet equivalent of a Rorschach test. We roll the logs until they're cool, and when they're cool enough and no longer will distort the candy if we leave them alone, we cut them into pieces, and our design is done. Our next batch of candy is going to be white pulled hearts in the middle of a transparent red background. This is a little unusual for us. Usually we make white backgrounds with artwork in it instead of transparent backgrounds. It's a little different to work with, and it can trace its origins to a different version of this candy that was made in the Orient, mostly in Japan. 
This batch is going to be flavored strawberry and cream. Bjorn cuts apart our palette of colors into the red and into what will become the white. Once again, we've got to make amber into white. We're going to do it a little differently now because the quantity is so small. With our last batch, we pulled the amber into white on a candy hook. With this batch, we're going to do it on our heated candy table. Joran is doing it this way because the table being heated keeps the candy from cooling as fast, and small pieces of candy cool much faster than large pieces. It's going to create the same effect, but it's going to make it easier for us to work in the next few stages. If you think about it, a heart can start as a triangle and have a groove added, and that's exactly what we do with this candy spatula. Joran adds the groove, and then we start packing it with colored candy to make this shape round. A round shape is easier to work with when we put the wrap on. We wrap it in a block of clear red candy, and it's ready to pull. We pull the candy from the logs to the rods, roll them until they're cool, and then cut them into the individual pieces. You can purchase our candies at www.pd.net. You can also subscribe to us here on YouTube and see our other videos, or follow us on Facebook and see what we're up to. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you if you come to Tallahassee to Lofty Pursuits.